So we've got another great question, okay? And a question from one of my subscribers. Now he sends this question by way of email and his email reads, I stumbled upon your channel some time ago and I really enjoy the teaching you have. Although sometimes I find some of the things you say annoying, uh, which I think that might be a good thing. I am a new believer that is struggling to find balance with God's word as well as life. But one question I have is making me stumble in my walk. And that question is regarding emotion. Why is it not wise to base a person or my salvation or truth of a sermon based on emotion alone? As I think a lot about postmodern thinkers and atheists would argue that whatever feels morally right is right and whatever feels wrong is wrong. I see this as an issue as I don't have much ground to disagree with their argument besides quoting Jeremiah 17, 9. And I've seen this personally impact my walk with the Lord. If you could expand this argument as to why this reasoning is faulty, I would greatly appreciate it. To start off, this is a great question and one I believe can help others. So I'm glad that you asked. So to answer the question, why is it not wise to base a person's salvation or truth preached in a sermon on emotion alone? The reason it's not wise is because your emotion is derived from your ignorance. Let me say that again. The reason it's not wise is because your emotion is derived from your ignorance. Colossians 2.8. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Now this is important, so listen. One of the things every new convert has to deal with the first year that they are saved is tackling the truth they find in the word of God up against the self-derived truths that they've created for themselves and worship their whole life. The first year I was saved, I began reading the word of God like it was the most important piece of reading material in the world because that's what it is. And one of the issues I had to deal with was coming across things in the Bible that didn't sit right with my own thoughts and opinions. In the first year, I had to kill my pride. That's what I had to do. And that's what every new convert has to do. Kill the, kill your pride, the flesh. Um, and you have to, because if I hadn't, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have been able to accept what I read as truth. Okay. This is not about how you feel. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how I feel. What does the word of God say? What does it say? Whatever it says is truth. Right now, the God of the heavens and the earth is perfectly sustaining the universe, the universe, perfectly and effortlessly. But you and your emotions know better, right? Wrong. Crucify your flesh and die to self so that you can live. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So repent. Get out of your, get out of your feelings and your emotions. Read the word of God and take it for what it is by faith. OK, I'll come in. You know, on the web, on the web, you know, like 10,000 people are calling for my death. I just preach at a place where everybody wants to beat me up afterwards. I come home feeling kind of sad. My wife says, what's wrong? I said, man, those guys won't beat me up. Those guys are trashing me. Uh, and it's just like everybody's against me. She said, they're supposed to be against you. This is what you do. Man up. Go out there and fight again. It's what you're called to do. This is what men do. They stand against falsehood, go out there and preach. Men, here's what I want you to realize. This is something you, this will help you later on when you get married. Let's say all hell's breaking loose. Everybody in the world has just come to your office with signs down with you. Everybody hates you. The world's falling apart. Happens to me about every other day. I get in my car and I drive home and I'm trying to get my heart right. And when I pull in that driveway, I do not get out of that car until I've settled some issues. It's not about me. It's not about my whining. It's not about my needs. It's not about my emotion. It's not about all this goofy stuff that people are telling you as men you need to be concerned about. My only concern is getting out of that car and walking into that house strong and joyful. Because the burdens I'm supposed to carry as a man, my wife is not supposed to carry. Nor are my children supposed to carry. See, you've been told that you need to marry a woman who can, you know, just, just carry you, basically. That you can share all your emotions with. Let, just die to your emotions, okay? Just die to all that psycho babble and everything else you've been told that you ought to be feeling inside. Say no to your feelings, and like my wife says, man up. And just do it. 
carry the burden. Cast your cares upon Christ because your wife was not created to carry your burdens. Children were not created to carry your burdens. And brothers in Christ can carry some of your burdens, but guys, I want to tell you honestly, I see Christian guys get together sharing their burdens and they sound like a bunch of just girls. They've been trained to talk a certain way. You know what's amazing? It's like when, when terrible catastrophes happened in, during my childhood, not to me, but to the nation and other things, no one went around to high schools providing counselors for kids who were emotionally distraught because they thought the world was coming to an end. They started doing that when psychologists told us that's how we are feeling and we need to get that out of our system. They've trained us like Pavlov's dog just to be soft. There is a biblical casting your cares upon Christ and there is one brother strengthening another brother and that is good and sometimes we all need that. But guys... We're just so, you know, even the Christian songs today, I hear some of these guys singing these songs and they're just whining about all their feelings. Makes me want to throw up. It's not what you are. You're being recreated in the image of something that's not biblical. Again, don't take this to an extreme. I'm not saying that you can't share your needs. I'm not saying that you can't do all these things. But be very careful. They've turned men into little emotional wastebaskets. And that's not what we are. We're supposed to deal with problems. We're supposed to carry burdens. We're supposed to carry things and not trouble our wives or our children with them. It ends with us. Again, there are times we can share with our wife. But guys, be very, very careful about becoming this emotionally needy person. That's not what you are. It's not what you were created to be. Now, listen to Jeremiah 12.5. And the Lord uses this verse in my life so much. If you have run with footmen and they have tired you out, then how can you compete with horses? If you fall down in a land of peace, how will you do in the thicket of the Jordan? And it's like sometimes I'll say, Lord, you know, these people said this and these people are writing this about me and these people twisted what I said in this book and this did not happen this way and all these different things. And it's like, Paul, if you can't run and be strong in the midst of this, how strong are you going to be when they throw you in prison? How strong are you going to be when you stand in a court of law and they totally defile your name? and accuse you of things you never did. How are you going to stand when one day someone puts a gun to your head and tells you to deny me? If you can't run in this time of peace, how are you going to run when it really gets tough? There's a strength that we should have and we need to cultivate that strength. Guys, you live in a culture that's cultivating your weaknesses. They want you to be weak. They want you to be gushy. They want you to be jellyfish. That's not what God wants you.